All right, so you can tell by how dusty this thing is uh, that I've been putting this one off for a while. Here are some paper towel. All right, so this is the uh, valve cover off a uh, Mini Cooper R56. Um, so spark plugs sit here, timing chains on this end. Uh, this end would be, um, so I'm trying to think. Oh, all the accessories are on the timing chain end, I think. I think the serpent heat belt and everything is down there too. So on this end would be the high pressure fuel pump. Um, on the top here, we've got too much crap in the way. Got the oil filler cap, again, the spark plug wells. And the thing that's interesting about these is they are actually more or less considered a wear part. So um, the PCV, the pressure crankcase valve assembly, is in here, uh, which is what I want to take apart and have a look at to see what's going on with it. It's got some sort of goofy three-way valve. Uh, this is a turbocharged engine. So it's got two inputs into the PCV system, the pressure crankcase system. There's one input here and one input on the side here. Uh, this one plugs in on the... I'll put a picture up and circle everything. So this one plugs in uh, basically where the air filter is. So this is going to be getting um, pre-turbo air, if that makes sense. Or pre-turbo suction, I guess would be the way to think about it. This is going to be getting post-turbo suction. And this one goes directly into the... Uh, well, this one plugs in before the turbo, this one plugs in uh, just before the intake manifold. Um, this would be the valve on the back end. Yeah, pretty crusty. Um, I don't know, we'll have to get that further apart to see what's going on, but uh, yeah. So um, uh, I guess normally that would be suctioned up and closed. Well, I don't wanna speak too soon because uh, we're going to have this whole thing apart and have a look at what's going on inside. Um, I don't know what this is back here. Uh, hopefully it will become apparent here eventually. Um, so like I was saying, this is actually considered a wear part on this vehicle. Um, what happens supposedly, which is what happened with this one, is the, um, the PCV will clog and the pressure has no place to go. So the weak point in the engine is this plastic valve cap and uh, it actually cracks the valve or the, uh, the whatever this thing's called, valve cover. There we go. So I do not immediately see how this is supposed to come apart. But that was promising. All right, so this is the top cover here. Uh, we've got, obviously, this, this portion was sealed. Um, so there was an O-ring. Huh. Really? That's all there is to that? Freaking weird, man. There's got to be something more complicated going on with that. Um, so we've got... Huh. Weird. So this thing looks like it's designed to induce cyclonic flow. Um, I'm assuming it comes out of here. Let me get a flashlight or something so we can see uh, what's going on. Everybody good with this? Piece of plastic sits on top. Let me get rid of it. Get it out of the way. Cool. Why is it that no matter how many you own, you can never find them? This is the only flashlight I can find. It's way overkill. But uh, hopefully, yeah, it's not going to work. Huh, can't really tell. Um, this looks like it comes off. Or did at one point. Looks like it's actually been welded into place. Um, you can see it's been rolled. Uh, looks like with kind of like a hot implement of some sort. I 
I guess since this is a destructive test, we don't really care. I'm going to assume that there is some sort of check valve in here. Uh, yeah, a little crusty. All right, so, yeah. So you can see there's this little door here, which is going to act as a check valve. Uh, it seems pretty free. Now, where does... Okay. So that, I'm assuming, is going into this port here, which, again, set up to create cyclonic flow. Very weird. Don't understand that one at all. Uh, it's going to come out of here, and this just ports directly to the engine. So that's this port right here. Um, and that's going to be the, the low pressure side of the system. So on this side, we're hooked to uh, just after the air filter. I'll show the picture again here. Um, anytime there is positive pressure in the crankcase, this valve is going to pop open. And the vacuum on the manifold side is going to pull that pressure through the turbocharger and through the intake loop back into the engine. All right, so that's that's that side. And this appears, I, I think what they're doing here with this whole setup is they're creating a space to trap oil. So you notice that this whole surface, uh, if you look at it, is kind of tapered down. So any oil mess that gets caught in here is going to work its way back and uh, just flow back into the engine. So they're trying to minimize the amount of oil that actually goes out of the PCV valve, which actually that's kind of clever. I kind of like that. Um, but I think that's that's all that's going on on that side. Um, there is an O-ring. Is there an O-ring? I think there was an O-ring on the other piece. Uh, I think to get this apart, we're gonna have to cut it as well. And I guess I can try and get this little cap off first. All right, so. This appears to be, oh, okay. All right, so that's gonna be another. Okay, another blow off valve. And this one goes against a spring, as you can see here. So that, this one was just open, right? So purely air pressure. This one's also going to have to overcome a spring to pop open. So it's another check valve. Um, oh, maybe I should back up a second. So uh, for those of you who don't know, the pressure crankcase valve system um, does a couple of things for the car. So um, old-fashioned engines are vented to the atmosphere. So these ports would just be open to the atmosphere because when the pistons are in there, moving around, they create pressure within the engine, within the crankcase, right? So beneath that piston, uh, because it's moving, it creates pressure. There's blow by, yada, yada, yada. Creates pressure in the crankcase, that has to get out somewhere. So older engines, they just vent that straight to the atmosphere. They don't worry about um, uh, uh, recirculating it. So what we're doing here, <coughs> excuse me, what we're doing here is we're recirculating the exhaust or the um those gases out of the crankcase into the intake and sucking them through and burning them uh in the engine and then sending them out the exhaust and the remaining oil and stuff is cleaned up by the catalytic converter um so that's um that's what that's doing uh it also ties into so the fuel tanks are not vented to the atmosphere either the fuel tanks are sealed systems and uh, there is a, so when you shut down your car, um, and I may have the details of how this is working, not quite right. There's something called the EGR valve, exhaust gas return. And what happens when you shut down your car is the fuel tank seals itself up, right? So you may have experienced, you get a, a check engine light from a uh, loose gas cap. That's because you broke, the seal is not there on the, uh, on the gas tank. So the other thing that this system does is when you start the car, it's got to exhaust that vapor out of the tank, and it does exactly the same thing. It uses this vacuum system to pull those exhaust vapors through the intake 
and uh, and into the engine. So that's kind of like the uh, uh, the nickel version of why this system's even here. I hope that made a little bit of sense. Um, well, I'm gonna try and cut this piece off and we'll take a look at what's under here. All right, so I'm gonna guess here there's another flapper valve like we saw a second ago. All right, yeah, another flapper valve or check valve, same type of flapper arrangement. So uh, when the pressure in the engine exceeds the pressure on the turbo side or vice versa, this valve will open. So fairly simple there. Kind of same thing that's going on over here. And in here, which is what I'm really curious about, is huh, a big rubber diaphragm. All right, so I think I, I see what's going on here. Now, how this whole thing works as a whole, I'm still not, I'm still fuzzy. But, turbo side, right? So, we get, if the pressure <clears throat> by the turbo is lower than the pressure in the engine, or the pressure in the engine is higher on the pressure of the pressure on the back side of the turbo, this valve is going to flop open. All right, we're good there. It is going to create suction in the engine. If... <clears throat> It creates too much suction. This valve, which is on a spring, is going to come down and it's going to seat against this journal right here. So this goes to there, I'm guessing. It almost has to. There's no way, right? I may take this apart further just to make absolutely sure, but I am 98% sure that's what's going on. All right, ain't nothing for it. I think this thing's just gonna have to come apart further to see what's going on. All right, so this was an absolute bear to get apart. So I'm still a little fuzzy on what exactly is going on here, but I can at least show you what vents to what, and maybe someone smarter than me can, uh, can figure this out. So we've got um, the two PCV valves or the two outlets, so this is turbo side, this is air intake side, that's here and that's here. And remember, those were one-way check valves, right? So if the pressure gets low, either here or here, those valves can open and allow gases to escape back through the intake. So in this case, they're going straight to the intake. Over here, they're going through the turbo and into the intake. Cool. All right. This portion uh, is also included in that. So we've got this valve here. Um, I'm sorry. I screwed that up. So all the air that is coming into this cavity here, right? So for the two outlets has to come through this hole right here, which if you remember is where that diaphragm was sitting right here with the spring underneath it, right? So if there's too much vacuum in the engine, it's going to pull this shut and it's going to close off this hole right here. Neither of these valves can pull anything at that point. Right, so uh, if there's too much vacuum in the engine, it shuts down this whole system. So we're good with that. Up here, uh, so to get to this valve right here, the air has to come up through uh, this port here and this port here, which just ducks straight to the engine, right? Uh, this port is I believe it's going to be more of a return port because you remember it had that little uh, valve on it, uh, that little uh, rubber diaphragm, this guy, right, which is kind of a weakish check valve. So it's going to allow stuff out, but it's not going to allow things to get sucked up very well. 
So pressurized air from inside the engine is going to come into this compartment. It's going to swirl around in here, right? And again, the purpose of this chamber is to capture oil and let it go back into the engine because you can see it's slanted there and it's going to stop, you know, the majority of the oil. Well, as you can see, it doesn't do that great of a job because there's all kinds of sludge here, but it's going to stop oil from getting out, right? So from there, it's going to come through this little cyclonic thing. Uh, I'm guessing that's to induce a turbulent flow to make it take the air longer to get from here, here, pass through here, and come out here, right? Which is that vacuum chamber that we were talking about earlier. So this is the chamber where if uh, there is too much of a vacuum in there, it's going to pull shut and close and stop uh, either of these PCV valves from receiving air. Now, I think that this guy on the back here uh, is a emergency blow-off valve. So if you remember, this guy was sitting in there, and I can't find the spring, but there's a spring around here somewhere. There was a fairly beefy uh, spring sitting on top of this, and then this plug sits back here. So I think the theory is, and it's not screwed in or anything, it's just a pull plug, right? So if something goes wrong with this system, something clogs or something like that, and the pressure builds in here, this has the ability to pop off and vent. So I guess that would be a situation where, um, well, it has to overcome that spring and it has to pull this out. So that's actually quite a bit of force in order to do that. Uh, yeah, so that's all I got here. I'm not really sure, uh, it's interesting. There's some markings there. I was trying to figure out what that was. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure, like, uh, you know, when you'd be pulling air through here, when you'd be pulling air through here and why the clockwork here. I'm sure that a large portion of it has to do with stopping oil. I think that that's the whole goal of this assembly is to, to reduce the amount of oil that's coming through the air, the intake. But anybody who's had one of these cars uh, knows that there's these things suck down tons of oil. Um, if you put a catch can on them and put a, you put a catch can on this port, um, it fills up, you know, well, not fills up, but it accumulates crap pretty quick. Um, you know, it's pulling all the water vapor and, you know, the oil vaporized, well, atomized oil, not vaporized oil um, out of the air. I mean, it gets a fair amount. So um, these engines are known for being fairly loose engines. They're fairly, uh, I guess that would be the right way to say it, right? Uh, low tolerance engines, not high tolerance. So the gaps in them and everything are fairly big. Um, and they do that to be able to get the power out of them and just be able to rev them. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I imagine there's more blow by in these engines than is typical of a lot of engines. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, leave it to BMW to, uh, make things way more complicated than, uh, well, maybe it's exactly as complicated as it needs to be. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, if you got any ideas, uh, Write in the comments below. I, I'm uh, I'm a little uh, little bit confused by this. Like I said, where the air goes and when and all that. I'll have to think about it some more. But anyway, hope this helps somebody out. And uh, I will. Uh, thanks for watching. I guess.